Rollerball, a 1975 movie, is a thrilling dive into a dystopian future where corporations rule the world and violence is a form of entertainment. Set in a society where individuality is suppressed, Rollerball explores the story of a man named Jonathan E., played by James Caan, who rises to prominence in the violent sport of Rollerball. The movie delves into themes of corporate control, individualism, and the consequences of unchecked power. As you delve into this film, get ready for a roller coaster ride of emotions. There are many funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting to be uncovered, so keep watching. Are there any lesser known facts or anecdotes about this movie that fascinate you? Out of the many roles in this movie, which one was your favorite? We want to hear from you. Share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going. In 1975, there was a movie called Rollerball set in a future where big companies ruled everything. In this world, regular sports were gone, replaced by the brutal game Rollerball. The story follows a guy named Jonathan E., who's really good at rollerball. He becomes a symbol of rebellion against the powerful system. As he climbs the ranks in the game, he challenges the company's authority and their grip on people's freedom. Alongside Jonathan are teammates, rivals, and supporters, all adding to the drama. The setting is a grim future with fancy tech, but a society falling apart. Rollerball got a lot of praise for its unique story, strong characters, and great acting. It won awards and got people talking about the role of big companies and the dangers of too much power. Overall, Rollerball is a classic that still connects with audiences today. Set in 2018, this film, crafted in West Germany, presents a dystopian future where corporations reign supreme. The anthem heard at the start of the first game bears a resemblance to West Germany's national anthem, Eine Kate und Recht und Freiheit. Among the stuntmen, English professional wrestler Mark Rocco, known by his nickname Rollerball, played a role. His presence adds a unique dimension to the action-packed sequences, blending athleticism with the narrative's intensity. Rollerball's contribution to the film extends beyond his physical prowess, as his involvement underscores the fusion of entertainment and societal commentary within the storyline. In the making of the film, extras were paid extra to cut their long hair, ensuring the film's aesthetic wasn't bound to its era. The lead actor, a former champion roller skater, executed many stunts himself. He also had a background in boxing, having won amateur titles, including the heavyweight Golden Gloves of Chicago. The rollerball game scenes were shot in the basketball hall of the 1972 Summer Olympics, located in Munich, West Germany. This venue's unique circular footprint allowed for versatile shooting arrangements. And Turkle, even though offered a big part in the movie, said no to it, causing a lot of talk in Hollywood. The film's cool idea and intense vibe didn't just catch people's attention. It became really popular in pop culture. It influenced more than just movies, inspiring different versions and spin-offs on TV and elsewhere. One interesting thing is that when you saw the impressive building in the movie, you were actually looking at the headquarters of a famous car company. They filmed those scenes at the big BMW building in Munich, West Germany, which made the futuristic setting seem real. Also, the cool library in the movie was a real place to the old BMW museum next to the headquarters. Looking back, Rollerball stays important not just as a great movie, but also as something that inspires lots of people to tell stories and be creative about the future. Its effect shows how good stories and movies can reach lots of people all over the world. This is Rollerball, a classic movie. In the movie Rollerball, even before the rule changes introduced during the film, the record number of deaths during a match was already 9 out of 24 players. Although the film's credits list the Baroque composer Tommaso Albanoni as the composer of the adagio for strings and organ in G minor, it has since emerged that the work has been a bit of fakery by the late Italian musicologist Remo Gisato. He claimed that he arranged it from a fragment of Albanoni's work, but said fragment was never produced, leading to general acceptance that the Albanoni attribution is a well-orchestrated hoax. The copyright was held by Gisato and dates from 1958. There's also an uncredited role in the original Rollerball. She was hired to play one of the party guests, but in her own words, found a way to being in the dressing room when the camera was on. The details of this can be heard on the Conan, the Destroyer commentary she recorded in 2004. During the filming of the movie Rollerball, despite rumors suggesting fatalities, no deaths occurred. However, several cast and crew members sustained serious injuries, with some requiring hospitalization. 
The rollerball sequences were shot in the Munich Olympic Basketball Arena. Interestingly, just two years before filming, a controversial basketball game for the gold medal took place there. The USSR defeated the U.S. team by one point amidst three contentious opportunities given to the Soviets to score the winning basket. In the movie, the Zero computer's responses are described as highly ambiguous, leading to the perception that it knows nothing at all. This reflects the concept of extreme genius where questions have multiple interpretations, resulting in generalized answers devoid of specific value. An analogous example is found in Douglas Adams' novel The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where the ultimate answer to the meaning of life is humorously portrayed as 42. In 1975, Rollerball featured Richard Lepermentier alongside his ex-wife in three movies. The movie's game sequences took place in Munich's Olympic Basketball Arena, West Germany. Director Norman Jewison aimed for an anti-violence message, yet the game's action captivated audiences. Some even proposed forming rollerball leagues post-release, which shocked him. The game portrayed was so realistic that everyone, including cast and stunt performers, engaged in it between takes. The movie's effect on audiences and its unintended consequences highlight the intricate nature of its message about violence and entertainment. In a memorable part of the movie, around one hour and 24 minutes in, the DVD commentary reveals that what seems like a helicopter taking off is actually the camera being lowered down. This clever filmmaking trick adds depth to the scene without needing fancy special effects. The movie didn't just stay on the screen. It influenced the rock band DeVoe to create their own funny DeVoe corporate anthem for their album in 1979. This anthem became a regular start to the band's live shows, showing how much the movie affected popular culture. Also, the helicopter shown at the Tokyo Hospital is called a German Bolkow Bo 105, showing how much attention to detail went into designing the film. These insights give us a peek into the creative choices and cultural impact of Rollerball, showing why it's important in both movies and music. In 1977, James Caan rated Rollerball an 8 out of 10, showcasing his satisfaction with the film. The movie featured a high-speed, intense sport where the ball was shot onto the track pneumatically at 120 miles per hour. Skaters slinging themselves from the motorcycles often reached over 40 miles per hour, adding to the adrenaline of the game. James Caan, known for his role in Rollerball, starred opposite Arnold Schwarzenegger in the film Eraser. Schwarzenegger had also appeared in The Running Man, where he played a man forced to partake in a televised gladiator game. In the movie, before the Tokyo game, the trainer mentions that the Japanese team blends karate and hapkido, a Korean martial art. He elaborates on how this fusion of styles gives them a unique advantage on the field, combining the discipline and precision of karate with the fluidity and versatility of hapkido. At Jonathan E.S. House, there's an orange and black helicopter parked outside, an Instrom F-28 model from 1965, which is still made today. It's a striking sight against the backdrop of the suburban neighborhood, hinting at Jonathan's affluent lifestyle and taste for the extraordinary. Rollerball is notable for being one of the earliest films to credit stunt performers, recognizing their crucial role in bringing the thrilling action sequences to life. Their daring feats add a visceral intensity to the film's adrenaline-fueled matches, enhancing the viewer's immersion in the high-stakes world of the game. This acknowledgement of the stunt performer's contributions reflects a growing appreciation for the behind-the-scenes talent that enriches cinematic experiences.